Welcome to the 2020 Cum Laude Induction Service, coming to you from the Frank D. Ashburn Chapel. It delights me to be able to share Brooks School's new land acknowledgement on the occasion of our first ceremony since introducing it in February. Here it is. At Brooks School, we live and learn on land once of the Penacook people, and we acknowledge their enduring presence. The Cum Laude Society was founded in 1906 to recognize academic excellence in the secondary school student population. This ceremony and the reception that will follow in spirit are demonstrations of our enthusiastic commitment to honor scholastic achievement at Brooks School. To our guests all across the world, thank you for celebrating with us. We'll begin by singing This Little Light of Mine. If you're so inclined, please rise and sing and dance your way around your living room. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce my esteemed colleague, Mr. Douglas Burbank. Mr. Burbank currently teaches geometry, honors algebra two, pre-calculus, and calculus. It should come as no surprise to learn that he welcomed the special challenge of four class preps to best support the needs of his department and the students. Furthermore, it is evidence of his versatility, which is undeniably expansive. Since his arrival to Brooks in 1986, Mr. Burbank has contributed meaningfully to our community in four academic departments, the arts, mathematics, science, and the now defunct computer science department. As a groundbreaking pioneer in that field, Mr. Burbank even created the first web page that Brooks School ever had in the late 90s. He has coached soccer, squash, tennis, and volleyball across both the boys and girls programs. Over his 34 years at Brooks, Mr. Burbank has served as a dorm parent in seven of our 10 dormitories, advised generations of students, written hundreds of college recommendations, 
and has led both the computer club and math team with gusto. Perhaps his greatest and most beloved role is that of husband and father. He and Mrs. Crump Burbank have one of the all-time great Brooks School love stories, paving the way for the Charpentiers, Packards, Heinzes, and Waters, among others. Their son, Andreas, class of 2011, was and is a standout scholar, athlete, and all-around human being. He is so great, in fact, that Mr. Burbank will join his son to work at Squash Busters this coming year. His retirement from Brooks School is to our profound collective sadness because the magnitude of his impact on this community knows no bounds. Thankfully, Mr. Burbank will remain a campus neighbor, dining hall seatmate, and frequent sports fan so that we can continue to celebrate his awesomeness over time and let him know how much he means to us. Mr. Burbank, we are excited to hear your message for the inductees today. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Douglas Burbank as our 2020 Cum Laude Society speaker. Thank you, Susanna, for those kind words. The other day, I went out for a run. I wasn't running at your pace, but rather imagined the pace of an out of shape 56 year old. Okay, let's call it a fast walk with a noticeable limp due to an arthritic hip. Anyway, as I moved forward, my mind began to wander as it often does. I started to think about friends, current students and colleagues who are cum laude society members. Before I even reached the end of Main Street, just past Thornhouse, my list had already grown quite long. Both of my math team captains are being celebrated today. Both of my squash team captains are here as well. After a few more seconds, I realized all five of my colleagues that I work with in Blake House as dorm parents are inductees. Remarkably, most of my winter term courses, including Applications of Origami with Mr. Nam, Intro to Piano with Mr. Griffith, From Seed to Table with Mrs. Price, to Mural Painting with my dad, to Coding with Mrs. Hines, to Step, Stomp, and Slide with Ms. Ferdet, were co-taught with cum laude inductees. As my run slowed, as if that was possible, the list continued to grow to include all three of my first year college roommates. I became mystified by the, my new discovery. It actually made me quite uncomfortable. I immediately turned around at the four corners and started to walk back towards the comfort of my home on campus, the Thompson House down by the lake. As I walked, I wondered if this attraction was actually healthy. When my house came into view, it dawned on me, both my son, Andres, and my wife, Miss Crump Burbank, are inductees. Moments later, when I passed the academic building and gazed over, viewing the first floor of the link, I realized the entire math department are inductees as well with the exception of one, me. That's right, I am not a cum laude member. Over the course of my career, had I unknowingly become a first team cum laude society party crasher? Was I a cum laude stalker? Or am I simply a CLS devoted and intense groupie? By the time I got to my driveway, it still wasn't clear to me. Then my phone rang. It was my mom. I told her what I had realized during my run, and, as any kind-hearted mom would do while sensing her grown son was in some state of panic and disarray, she replied without skipping a beat. Doug, maybe you are looking at it upside down. 
Maybe it's them who are drawn to you. With that, I responded, I love you, Mom. You're the best. She has always been my number one fan. I would like to congratulate those of you who are being inducted into the Cum Laude Society today. What an honor it is for me to have an opportunity to say a few words on this special day to celebrate your academic excellence. Previously, the closest I had come to being a participant in a cum laude ceremony was as a Brooks School parent nine years ago. To have my son recognized for his academic excellence is a moment I will cherish forever. It is one of the fondest and proudest moments I had had while he was in high school. To that end, congratulations to the parents and guardians of these scholars. Your unwavering support and guidance undoubtedly played a significant role in your child's success, as well as some well-timed nagging and firmness. Congratulations. Frankly, as a high school student, I did not share the same academic accolades that these students have shown over the course of their Brooks career. Even if you adjust for grade inflation and fudge it just a little bit more, I still would not have been recognized for my overall excellence in the classroom. In fact, I found my high school report card in an old mildewed box. After reviewing it, I clearly understand why it was still in my dusty basement after all these years. There's a good reason it never was framed or taped to my parents' refrigerator. Let's just say I'm fortunate Brooks never asked me to review my high school transcript when they hired me as an intern in the fall of 1986. Over the past four years, I have seen many of your academic feats. This includes your thorough and sophisticated statistical analysis of hundreds of college data points under the guidance of Mr. Smith in pre-calculus. I've heard your awe-inspiring jazz band performances for Mrs. Keller. Your rhythmic call and response patterns energized me to my core. I've secretly read your history papers for Ms. Nasser on the antebellum error that were accidentally sent to the faculty room printer. In my opinion, your thesis and following arguments were precise, well-organized, analytical, and concrete. Your written word completely captivated me and was often a reason why I was late for class. I joined your poetry class with Mr. Hale on the English hallway when, as a group, you captured the meaning of love in an Emily Dickinson poem. After multiple readings, you discovered one of her linguistic surprises, despite its dense syntax and imperfect rhyme. I've witnessed your ability to find the relationship between physical entities in order to solve one of Mr. Hesse's AP physics questions on angular displacement for uniform circular motion. I've joined you in Senora Miller's class while you effortlessly and confidently communicated la diferencia entre los usos de ser y estar y los usos de pretérito y imperfecto. I've experienced your creative side when visiting Mrs. LaCoughlin's art class as you demonstrated your impressive ability to juxtapose both positive and negative space in a three-dimensional object. I've heard you speak with emotion, conviction, and eloquence in front of the entire school for Mr. McVeigh's oratory class and on the invitation of Mr. Chapman in chapel. It comes as no surprise that we are celebrating you today. However, as impressive as you are individually, as a collective group, 
Your impact on others is much more powerful. Personally, you all have inspired me to continue to be a lifelong learner and to follow your lead in embracing a growth mindset. By your collective actions, you have confirmed for me that my infatuation, which has lasted since high school, with Ralph Waldo Emerson's quote, it's not the destination, it's the journey, has been a worthwhile endeavor. I first recalled hearing this quote, actually an adaptation of this quote, from one of my childhood heroes, professional tennis player, Arthur Ashe. Mr. Ashe was one of the most prominent players on the tour during my early childhood. Mr. Ashe's version of the quote went like this. Success is a journey, not a destination. The doing is often more important than the outcome. The word doing resonated with me. I was keenly aware of Mr. Ash, Mr. Ash purposely did not indicate exactly how, long, how often the doing was more important than the outcome. But for me, the word doing was clearly written in large, bold-faced font with all five letters in caps. I am going to focus for a moment on the journey and share what it has looked like for me while at Brooks as an adult learner. In fact, it is more of a quest than a journey. I think of a journey as being finite with a final destination, an nth, with an nth term, if you will. A quest, on the other hand, is a journey in pursuit of a goal. It is a lifelong mission where the end is unknown. When on a quest, you set off on a journey of discovery, and with some luck, you will find yourself in unexpected places. When I was in high school, the success curve was often measured by your ability to maintain a linear path. The greater the slope, the better. The longer you stayed on that one-dimensional path equaled more success. I struggled with this learning curve construct predominantly because I made too many mistakes and my mind often wandered off on tangents. I sought a more organic learning approach. My learning curve resembled one of those crazy straws you likely played with as a child as you drank strawberry milk. The straw was a combination of multiple loops with several misdirections. Looking back, I bet if Ms. Schenkel's BC math students were to calculate the derivative of my crazy straw's three-dimensional learning curve, it would have been a function with a positive slope as well. For me, most of my true learning, the learning that I loved and became engrossed in, and frankly, the learning that stuck, occurred while I was off that linear path picking myself up, back up, from my initial failure. Thankfully, your generation, and therefore you, understand the value of this more than my generation. You take falling down like a lacrosse ball. You effortlessly and naturally bounce right back up. My generation saw falling down as an egg does. I'm drawn towards people who take risks without fear and understand the value in the process of rebounding. On my classroom door, there is a quote from the legendary teacher, coach, romantic, and family man, John Wooden. For as long as I can remember, I have had this quote taped to my classroom door. It has followed me during my Brooks career from math, to art, to robotics, to the Lehman Arts Center, to the IT department, to physics, and back to math. I'm certain you have either read the quote or have heard it before. Mr. Wooden preached the advice, 
Make each day your masterpiece. For Mr. Wooden, making each day your masterpiece means in order to attain the best of your ability, it requires focusing on what you are doing in the moment. It is about recognizing that nothing can change what happened yesterday. Excuse me. It was about recognizing that nothing can change what happened yesterday and that you can only affect what will happen tomorrow by what you do today. It means letting go of the past and not worrying about the future. Fortunately, creating your masterpiece is a goal that is within your control. Apply this wisdom in small doses throughout the day and you will have created your masterpiece that will allow you to slip into a deep, rewarding sleep at night. Does this sound familiar? Making each day your masterpiece is a byproduct of successful mindfulness, the practice of attaining greater awareness and appreciation for the moment you are in. Your generation, and therefore you, Embrace this exercise more than my generation. I am drawn towards people who peacefully connect to one's inner self. It is your collective energy and unwavering support that has encouraged me to become more comfortable with being uncomfortable. This mindset has led me to countless unexpected places full of wonderful surprises. All have brought a richness to my life I had yet to experience. They are often endeavors requiring me to check my insecurities at the door and to let the vitality of you, the students in the room, to help guide me. Despite being unable to carry a musical note with my voice and with failing ears, I was an active and welcome member of the gospel choir for an entire year. I enrolled in Spanish two and in Spanish three while sitting next to and seeking help from some of my own math students. I was not only a co-teacher in my intro to piano winter term course, but I was a student as well. I overcame my fear of performing in a recital in front of others, in large part, because of the support of my classmates. This past fall, I coached a team when for the very first time I saw the sport played with actual rules was during the opening match of the season. And this winter, I co-taught a winter term dance course despite having no dance training, and as all five of my siblings would confirm, without having any rhythm. Your generation, and therefore you, are more agile and resilient than my generation. I am drawn towards people who excel in a community that nurtures and cultivates risks thinking different, and personal development. In other words, as I've experienced my crazy straw quest, I'm drawn towards people who encourage me to bounce, who join me as I explore my inner spirit, and who help guide me when I'm feeling vulnerable, who help celebrate lifelong learners as they move along their life's journey even when their movement is gentle with a noticeable limp. I would like to close with two quotes. The first is by Sir Ken Robinson. Sir Robinson is a New York Times best-selling author, a prominent TED Talk speaker, and an education and creativity expert. These words describe what you have collectively done for me, and therefore, in my role as an educator, I strive to pass on to my students as they pursue their holistic 
personal quest. Sir Robinson wrote, you cannot predict the outcome of human development. All you can do is, like a farmer, create the conditions under which it will begin to flourish. The second is credited to Leonardo de Ser Piero da Vinci, who passed away almost exactly 500 years ago today. Mr. Vinci was a savant in the fields of art and science. He dedicated his life to the stunning beauty created by the overlap of these two disciplines. He possessed an unlimited thirst for knowledge. He used his superb intellect, unusual powers of observation, unyielding curiosity of nature, and masterful artistic expression to allow his diverse pursuits to flourish. He said, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. Congratulations once again to those of you who are being inducted into the Cum Laude Society today. May you forever shine on our school and let us be teachers and scholars taught by thee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burbank. What an incredible message for the class of 2020 and one that assuredly cements your legacy of open-mindedness, curiosity, and engagement. Next, the awarding of certificates. Student honorees, the distinguished record you have made at Brooks School has won for you membership in the Cum Laude Society. The Society is a fellowship of scholars whose purpose is to recognize excellence in academic work. As you pursue your education, it is our hope that you will accept the honor of membership in this society as a responsibility to make a contribution to the ongoing search for greater understanding of humanity and society. The motto of the society is Erite, Dike, Time, Excellence, Justice, and Honor. Erite includes the concept of excellence in the moral sense and is not limited to the ideal of superiority and scholarship, nor does it involve the endeavor of competing primarily for academic goals. DK includes the concept of what is suitable and appropriate as well as just. TME includes the concept of dignity and truth as well as honor. In testimony of your admission to the Cum Laude Society, by the authority of the society duly granted, I now present to you these certificates of membership. Mr. Packard, Will you please join me in honoring our students? Inductees, as your name is read, please come forward virtually to accept your certificate and pin from Mr. Packard. To those gathered in support of our students in every corner of the globe, you may cheer your loudest from home and direct your positive energies their way. Anusha Barua. Yay! Mary Catherine Boshar. Nicholas George Karabatsis. Taylor Ann Charpentier. (laughs) 
Emily Hyen Che. Audrey Chung. Madeline Audrey Delaney. Hey. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Nasher L. Olia. John Elliot Fritz. Relax. Yay! Yay! Congrats. <laughs> Alexandra June Wright Graham. Madeline Stone Hesse. Nicole Patricia Iamonico. <laughs> Good job, <Nate. laughs> Amelia J. Kovacs. Yay, congratulations, Amelia. John Waken Moore. Sophia Grace Ranali. Yeah! Cameron Angelo Riley. Christopher Leland Smith. Kaijin Zhang. Congratulations to our inductees and to their families. These students' dedication to their studies has not gone unnoticed. We will now sing our school hymn together, loud and proud. Please rise in body or spirit.
In the spirit of what Mr. Burbank has shared today, and in honor of the inspiration and commitment that earned our inductees the recognition they have just received, I offer you these familiar but resonant words from 18th century poet William Cowper. Variety is the very spice of life that gives it all its flavor. Congratulations to the Cum Laude Society Class of 2020. Your families and school community are so proud of you. Now go out into the world and do great things. Thus concludes the 2020 Cum Laude Induction Ceremony. Thank you for joining us and take care. <laughs>